Hey everyone, welcome back to Doodling with Purpose, and boy am I glad to be back to doodling and not just doing uh, vocabulary and structure, because that's kind of the fun part of learning hieroglyphics. All right, and why are we back to doodling? Well, it's because we're going over the ideograms. Ideograms, the ones, you know, that have the little stroke mark under it that tell you the glyph is what it is. Remember, there are single sounds, double sounds, triple sounds, determinatives, and ideograms are the four eh, major type of glyphs. And ideograms are the ones that represent actually what they are. Some of them are things we already know, like arm or per house. Others are a little different and have to be sort of put together. There is roughly about 50 common ideograms. So here's kind of the first 20 or so that we've been going over. And it's just going to overall help with our understanding of the language. Because if you know what a ideogram and you know the different consonant sounds, well, then you know what a determinant is because it's not one of those. All right, let's take a quick look at an ideogram in a sentence. So here we have a sentence structure using the ideogram heart, ib. That is the uh, second to last glyph there. This sentence, first we see the stop sign, iu, which means we're going into the past, so we know we're past tense. And then we have the verb radi, to give. N for the ED past tense, the man sitting for I, and then we have the ideogram heart and the sign, the ideogram for my at the end, the man sitting. So we have two ideograms in this sentence. I gave my heart, or give becomes gave heart my I, <laughs> if you will, in that English to Egyptian word order. All right. So now an ideogram, so we have heart and my, let's just look at the ideogram for heart. The whole same sentence could be written by writing out the word heart, I, B, ib. So here I've drawn a box around the ideogram for heart, as well as the word for heart in the same sentence. Either one are acceptable, because hieroglyphics are elastic in nature, because they needed to either expand or contract the number of glyphs based on the space. Now, when you're doing a ideogram, you're going to have that stroke mark under it. If you are spelling it out, you can also include the ideogram as a determinative to reinforce what it is you're reading, that the IB is ib, heart, and not a different IB. So that's one way that determinatives and ideograms tend to cross, because they can be used for both. Ideograms can be determinatives. So the stroke line is usually used to indicate this, and determinatives sometimes use it, but almost always ideograms do. So either way, the stroke line is there to tell you what you're looking at is an object. So we're spelling out I, B, ib, here, the circle with the uh, arrow there in the middle, versus the ideogram for ib of a heart. All right, let's look at some new ideograms for this week as we do it with purpose. The word for palace, you'll start off with a rectangle, just like kindergarten, and then you're going to draw some detailed lines, double line in the middle and one on the top, and then you're going to do a diagonal across that box and add some like little hair flicks, like a rug, to the top. And this is, ah, palace, because you're drawing a palace is what you're drawing. Those are towers at the top and entrance, I know, it's kind of a metaphorical, kind of like purr, as an overview of a house. Let's look at the word fight. This is an interesting one because you kind of don't realize what you're drawing until you're done. It's a hands holding a shield and a sword. So it's made up of a sword, a shield, and arms. And you put all of those three elements together to create the ideogram. So here we have it on the right. You have your shield, your arm, your sword, combining them all together. Some people find it easiest to draw the shield first, others to do the arm. Technically, you're supposed to do the shield first, but, you know, it depends on how the scribes do it and the stroke lines and archaeology and all that. Either way, aha, fight. The road, or the way, if you happen to be a Mandalorian. All right, start with two straight parallel lines and connect them with two curved lines. What we're drawing here is a road. And then you're going to have some birdies on the top and the bottom, and you're going to turn those birds into triangles because they represent shrubbery on the side of the road. Then we're going to have a T with a stroke line, the loaf, and this is wa'at. Wa'a, the road, and then t. So wa'at, the way, or the road. Very, very common and actually one we've done before, so I want to make that easy. Pure. So this is also an ideogram that we've talked about in the past. You're going to start with a B, the foot, 
And then on top of that, you're going to draw a vase on its side. So you do the vase by drawing a single line. Then you're going to do the two curved lines for the top and the bottom, or the two sides of the vase, if you will. Then we'll do two angular lines coming out from them to make the vase's pouring lid, I suppose, at the top, and then a straight line across. So there you have your sideways jug, and then we're going to have some water coming out of it. You just draw Bart Simpson going down, just like the water sign, followed by three water signs, or MW, at the end. So this is Wa'ab Pure. So like a pure priest, or a pure king, or a pure person. All right, so here are the ideograms that we went over today. Palace, fight, the road, or the way, and pure. Aha. Aha, what and what up. So these are your flashcards for this week. Write them down, work on them, work on glyphing, and remember when you're doodling them, doodle with purpose. Oh, I cracked myself up. All right, thanks for being part of the class this week. We'll be back next week as we continue to have fun with ideograms. And as always, questions, comments, need more info, leave it in the comments below and I'll get you back. Thanks for being part of the class, and I'll see you next week.